Welcome to the Rapees Web Service Demo. This demonstration will illustrate how to use the Rapees automated testing application to test a RESTful web service. For this demonstration, we're going to be using the sample website, libraryinformationsystem.org, that contains a link to a REST web service for this library catalog system. To do that, I'm going to click on the REST link, and that will bring up a web page that illustrates all of the available web services for this application. This application supports uh, resources, provides resources for looking at the authors in the library catalog, viewing the list of books, creating a book, updating a book, and deleting a book. And you can scroll down and view on the various different methods and functions. For this demo, we're going to be using Rupees. So I've just started up here. And we're going to create a new test. After creating the new test, we'll have an empty test script. We'll also have an empty object tree. When we go into the test file section, We'll have initially a test.js file, which contains our main test entry point, an object.js file, which contains the JavaScript representation of all of our objects. We won't typically have to modify this. And then the user file, where the user custom functions will exist. So this demo, because we're using web services, we're going to first click on the web service link. And that will give us the option to create a new web service test file. This will store our test definition. Click on create. Once it's finished, it's going to create the web service test form. It's also going to add a file for, with a .rest extension in the services folder. This is where all our web services are going to be stored. For web service testing, unlike testing user interface, we don't actually click on an application and record and click the interaction. Instead, we actually create the queries to interact with the web service. So the first thing we need to do is we need to be able to get unique session ID. This is a, a function in our test application that needs to be used before accessing the system. This is to prevent different test sessions of writing. This is equivalent to a login or, or authentication step that many web servers will have. To do this, we basically call this URL and we'll get back a session ID that we can then pass to the other function. So we'll get our URL. And we're going to paste it in the query line. We'll call this function get session. Now, if we hit the send button, it will then query the web service for it. It's querying the application. Any information coming back will be displayed in the response header at response body. So it sent back a bad request, and in the response body, access denied. We're actually missing the authentication stack, so we need to go in and add a credential. If we go back to our web service definition, it describes here how to do that. We need to pass in the user and password. So to do that, we will click on the option to add a credentials. The login is librarian, password, librarian. Hit add. And now we send the request, send back OK, and the body comes back with our special session screen. Now, you can get the data back in XML format, which we have right now, or you can get it back in JavaScript format. The one advantage of JavaScript format is because Wikipedia uses JavaScript as its native scripting language, if you get data back in JavaScript, it doesn't need to be explicitly parsed and turned into objects. It will automatically come back as object representation. This makes interacting with it much easier. So we generally want to add in a header to tell the web service to send back the data as a um, JSON string rather than XML. So to do that, it describes it in the, in the documentation. We'll basically tell it to pass it back as application JSON. 
So we add a header. And the header is content type. Value JSON. Hit send. And it came back as JSON with an XML. We're now going to save that request. Hit save. And the next thing we want to do is get back a list of books. So to do that, we're going to use the special command book get. And to get back a single book, we pass through the book and the ID to get a list of books. We simply click on the link here to get the information. We pass through the URL book to the session ID, and that will get back all the books from our session. So what we'll do is so avoid having to enter the content type of the authentication all over again. We will use the shorthand cut option to clone the current request and create a new request. And the new will be called get books. We'll clone that. And we can have our new book function M. Now all we can do is change the URL. There we go. And we have a parameter session ID. We're going to capture here. So to test out our functionality, we hit the button, and it gets back a list of books. It utilizes JavaScript. Great. So the next thing we need to do, save our request. We have this parameter session ID. We can actually pass that in as a parameter, or we can just hard code it. The business rule is not changed for our request. We're going to just hard code it in. And send that. There we go. Now, if we want to get back a specific book, we can simply clone this and call it get book. And to get an individual book, we actually have to pass through the ID of the book. So for example, ID1, ID2. The functionality of doing that is described in the documentation. Book, get with the ID. And we just pass through the number. So all we need to do is pass through the number. To get book ID1, we're just going to pass through book slash one. Hit send. And then we get one book. Now, it will be tedious to have to record a separate web service request for every single book we want to get. We really want to parameterize that number so that we can pass all the function with that parameter. That's very easy to do. We repeat, we simply choose to add parameter and we'll call it book ID. And we'll give it a default value of one. And we'll then choose to insert that parameter into our URL. We'll delete the one that we have and we'll insert. You see, uses the curly bracket notation. Save that. Great. The next thing we'll do is now use this web service set request to actually program again in our test script. To do that, we first have to update the object tree. To do that, we click on rest, and then we click on update object tree. Okay. And what that's done is it's basically added in the object tree all of our web service requests as repeat objects. And this test could actually have visual objects too. You could have a mixture of web service requests and web controls, uh, Java controls, other things that you want to test from the front end. You could test the web service and the front end in parallel. You could load data in using the web service and then test with the grid on in the page to set the change. So to get our book by ID, we're going to grab that function across to here, and we're basically going to call it. So, for example, we click on this option, and it will show us all of the functions available for that web service. And typically, we just call do execute with the parameters. Once we call that function, we will get back the data. So to get the data back, we choose the same thing, get book, dot do, 
we've got get rather get response body. Now if we get response body is text, we'll get back the XML or the JavaScript um, text of the request. However, if we specify JSON as the format, we can also use the get response body object. In which case we'll get back a single book as an object rather than simply some text that we have to pass manually. So we can do for example var book and we can then display the name of the book. And if we're not sure what the fields are we're going to get back, we can always run the request again and do the data came back. So it should be name. Right now we're not passing a parameter, so it will pull back book one, which is the one that's default in our request these days. So if we hit play. Oh. Since I haven't, it means we have to do that. We'll just try that again. And that will return back under the basket book, which is book one. Now to get back a different book to our web service, all we need to do is pass a different parameter through. We pass that through in JavaScript form. So we'll just pass through here. Book ID colon two. Save that. Play. We get back the scarrows. So you can now loop through and return the name back for each of our books. Similarly, if you want to get back a list of books, we can use the other function, get book. And do that. We don't need any fun parameters because it's just a list. It gets back the list. We need to get back the book. We do bar book. Book equals yes. Book dot get response body object. The other commands that you have accessing the headers, accessing the body text, the response text, the request. That's very useful for debugging. If the web service doesn't work as you expect, you can fully inspect the information being sent back and forth to the web service at any time to the great debugging. So to get our list of books back, we can now do a loop. This book is an array. So length. And just write out the book name and the ID. Book dot Okay, and we'll hit play. on the test, and there you go, all the books. So that illustrates a very simple web service test, getting some data back, verifying it. Um, you can also use the same thing to send web data to a web service, insert items, update, delete, putting as closing any of the functions. And you can pass through either text if it's an XML web service, or you can pass through JavaScript objects directly, and it will automatically serialize them into JSON, the JavaScript-based web service. And if you want to look at any of the object definitions, they're available in the objects file, so you can see how it's displayed in repeats. And the last thing you would do is if any web service were to have failed, you might want to verify the, the 
URL or any data being sent. You can always do that by just adding a test to function to display a message. So let's say we want to get the URL that's being sent to verify it's what we expect. Get URL. Play. And that will send us back exactly where I was being sent. And that includes any parameters and other values that we set to you. Thank you for listening to this demonstration. There are other demonstrations on the Wet Infectra YouTube channel that illustrate other types of testing that you can do with repeat. Thanks, have a great day.